Yes, there is an easier, faster way to do lost resin casting. It even works if you make a major mistake, but more on my screw up later. When I previously showed you lost resin casting, uh, where I printed a dinosaur skull, I think, and then, then made it into a solid metal piece, uh, many of you asked if there was a way to shorten the lengthy burnout time of the mold. It seriously took like a full day. On top of that, the resins are, they're kind of tricky to print. They're very brittle. Uh, the cleanup's really tedious. It's, 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 it's a whole thing. So is there a way to shorten those burnout times? As it turns out, uh, yes, yes there is. And as a bonus, it uh, fixes all of those other problems I just mentioned as well. Spoilers, it's a kind of resin. You saw the thumbnail. Anyways, why is it so awesome? Well, uh, let's look at how I used to do it first. Before I was using a resin uh, by Soraya Tech called Cast Purple. Cast Purple's a great resin. I'm very happy with it. It did a very good job. Also, it's kind of a major pain to use. I have more print failures with that than any other resin on an old Mars 4. I have no problems on a Uniformation GK2 for reasons I'll go into later. Cast Purple, like a lot of these resins, has a lot of wax in there, and that's to facilitate easier burnout and melting away of the resin. It also makes the prints really brittle. I hear Cast Blue, like the Cast True Blue from Tech, is even worse, although I have a bottle of that, I've never, I haven't cracked it open. Maybe I will at some point when I get into like big sculptures or something, I don't know. Exposure times on that resin are super long, and the prints are very difficult to clean. I would need to use much longer wash times and sometimes multiple stages, and, and honestly, I wasn't sure I ever really got them clean and so, until I started using an ultrasonic uh, washing station. That seemed to help. Then the curing process was a whole deal. You had to be submerged in like a, a bowl of uh, vegetable glycerin because you didn't want oxygen to get in there when it was curing for reasons. But it would take like a half hour in this thing and then you had to clean off all the vegetable glycerin on a print that might be delicate and super brittle. Then with the burnout, it would take like a full day. If I went to the Sarai Tech website and clicked on burnout recommendations, it would forward me to the, the plaster manufacturer's recommendations. So that's what I used. And it didn't seem like a, like a super long process, but it seriously took about a day. I would start it, probably, you probably shouldn't do this, but I would start it the previous evening. And then I would like go to bed, go to work, come home, later that night, then it would be done and then I would pour. So it, it probably took a little over 24 hours all like from beginning to end because like I would pour it late. And by late, I mean like 11 p.m. or really late. So what is this magical solution? Well, it's a resin called Burn Away from a company named Monocure. Monocure is in Australia. They sent me this along with the Australian chocolate, which I will try right now. Mmm, that was really good. I should probably save the rest of this and share it with my wife. Let her try it. See, the thing is, I knew it was going to be really good because he actually sent me two and I ate the first one immediately. Oh yeah, wash it down with hot tea. That's what I need when it's 90 degrees out here. Ah, burning hot. We're gonna go into this in detail, but spoilers, this is going to be my go-to casting resin from now on. And get this, even if it wasn't for the faster rapid burnout, which works very well and we will go over that, uh, this would still be my go-to resin now. To show why, uh, I'm gonna print a couple of familiar things, a mini, a die, an open source ring, and a not so familiar thing. This is part of the Gingri lathe that I'm procrastinating building right now. It's, it's one of the crank knobs. It's not from the lathe book, it's from the book before, the foundry book. I've cast these in solid metal before. I have a split pattern for sand casting it, which I'm probably gonna do in bronze. But I figured, hey, let's try investment casting the thing and use investment casting to my advantage and make it cooler looking. I decided a wireframe filigree thing looked pretty cool for no practical reason, honestly. I even added some thicker bits for the shaft, the, the steel shaft and for the set screw to go into. I was learning to play with modifiers and blender. That's why it looks this way. This wireframe thing is super delicate. I printed it with no internal supports because how am I gonna get them out of there? But here's where the problems start. These are printed in layers. Each layer cures to like the release film on the bottom of the vat and it pulls off. That means every single layer of which there are thousands, uh, the entire print below that layer gets pulled on. Casting resins tend to be brittle and I'm asking these tiny, tiny wires of not fully cured resin between those layers to hold up to thousands of tugs from the rising plate. What could possibly go wrong? Well, there's one major benefit of this Monocure Burnaway stuff. It's super nice to print. Somehow, through witchcraft probably, this resin has no wax in it. You might think without wax, it should print like any other plastic resin. Yes, yes it does. This is super nice stuff to print. This is all the support material it had and it's still printed this nice. Can you believe that? I'm very impressed by how durable these prints are. It's not, it's probably not as tough as like the ABS like that I used to print other stuff, but it's, I'm not gonna accidentally break the thing just holding it in my hand. 
you can probably see a little bit here there'll be some close up it's kind of rigid and if i push it too hard it's definitely going to break but like it's it's certainly not made out of glass this stuff then there's a print time it's much faster to print so the exposure time i use for these on a uniformation gk2 uh, i gotta look it up 1.3 seconds for a 30 micron layer for a Soriatek cast purple, I had to look that up too. My layer time was about four and a half seconds. That's a big difference. So for the things I printed for today, the print time, all else being equal, was two hours faster. That's two hours less printing time and two hours less uh, wear on your LCD screen. I used the GK2 for this specifically because I wanted it to be more of an apples to apples comparison with what I was doing before and that's what I used last time. Also, it's my favorite printer for these burnout casting resins. In part because it's, it's much better, I think, at printing difficult resins. So in the middle of winter, when it's cold, the GK2 heats the resin, which is very handy. The prints look fantastic, I've talked about it in other videos, and they are on hard sale right now. I'll put a link down below with a big discount code in the description. Go take a look, they were very expensive, now they're on pretty deep sale. And I know what you're thinking, they just announced the GK3 Ultra, should, should you maybe wait for that? Would it be an upgrade? Um, not necessarily. That printer isn't so much a successor to the GK2, it's, it's basically the same kind of printer, more or less, with a few extra features. Same printer, but bigger, much bigger. And these things that we're printing for, for investment casting, they're not very big. So you're kind of spending money on nothing. It'll work fine, I'm sure. It's very large. I got one sitting over here. I'm working on a review for that, so stay tuned. I'm just gonna use the GK2 for the casting stuff unless I get into like really big, huge sculptures or something, then I might try it. Who knows, you'll see in the future. Now back to that exposure time. I've said before that speed is not a huge motivator for me, and that's true. But you also save time processing. Washing this burn away stuff is actually much easier. The uncured resin on the surface uh, seems to wash off pretty quickly in like an IPA solution, which is what I use. And these prints getting splashed around in one of the normal wash stations aren't gonna get smashed and like chopped up because they're not that brittle. I still use the ultrasonic cleaner at the end though because why not, I got one. But curing time, curing time is the real saver here. Uh, you can throw the stuff in a normal cure station for like five or 10 minutes, that's it. No, no vegetable glycerin bath, no half hour, no cleaning off the vegetable glycerin later and accidentally breaking off that tiny thing because you weren't being that careful. None of that. It cures like normal plastic resin. That alone would sell me on this stuff, hands down, just right there. But let's take a look at the detail of those prints. Are they any good? I'll show you some, some macro shots of these. I have yet to really find a resin that I didn't think looked pretty good. Uh, honestly, maybe I could find differences if I did like a really close up macro lens apples to apples comparison but probably not. My eyes say it looks just as good as any other resin I've tried. And if it's not better than your eyes can see, does it really matter? A little while back, I looked at the, the Mars 5 Ultra printer with the 18 micron pixels and the 20 micron layer height, and I compared it side by side to the 30 micron pixels and 30 micron layer height of the GK2. That was using this resin, and the prints looked amazing on both machines. It makes me think that we're kind of hitting that practical limit where more resolution isn't really gonna help. The resolution is already incredible. It's it's definitely good enough. And this resin is no exception. The, the prints look amazing. I could even print this really, really delicate filigree ring that failed when I when I tried printing it in Soraya Tech. Of course, that was back when I didn't know how to support things, uh, but I still don't, and the prints came out fine. So there you go. Sprewing this stuff up went just fine. The wax wets really nicely, it adheres to it. I didn't really have a problem. My shaky, shaky hands, those cause some problems, but the wax and resin, they, they get along pretty nicely. Next up, Preparing for burnout. The old burnout schedule took a long time, around a full day. Here's a shot. It's the schedule recommended by the plaster maker. I use, I use Optima Prestige Plaster. But for this stuff, Monocure says you heat the oven up to about 1300 Fahrenheit. Then you stick the whole thing in there, cold, and that'll drop the temperature in there. But then you wait for it to heat back up to 1300, start a clock after four hours, cool it down to your casting temperature, and boom, you're done. I didn't do that. I stuck the thing in there cold, cranked it up to 1300 and held for four hours. The burnout oven I'm using is one that I built. It's a little bit extremely overpowered, so it might as well have just been shoved in there at 1300 Fahrenheit. But it's at this point where I screwed something up. So I'm pouring this in ZA12 alloy, with, like in previous videos. I don't know the recommended temperature for the metal or for the, the mold in this, because as far as I can tell, I'm the only guy who uses this metal. I don't think anyone else is doing it for investment casting. I poured the metal and the metal was at 480 Celsius and the mold was at, I, I don't know. Off camera, since the last time I've used this burn oven, I've actually like done a lot of work on it and I, I extra insulated everything. So it would heat up really fast and I wanted to get it even hotter. 
Um, I don't know why, but that means it cooled off really slowly and it ended up throwing a failure to cool code, FTC. Here's the thing, when it shuts off or not cooling off fast enough, it doesn't cool any faster. So I opened the lid and hoped it would cool off a bit, uh, but I, I, I really don't know what temperature it was. I assume it was way too hot because the metal stayed liquid for like 15 minutes after I poured. It should solidify in seconds. This metal is a hyper-eutectic mix of aluminum and zinc, and when it sits molten for too long, it tends to separate out, and you get really, really weird shrinkage problems on anything thick. So we're not gonna look at the mini or the ring or the die. They don't look great. They filled in all the way, quite clearly, but there's, the, the shrinkage is just, it's crazy. We're gonna focus on the Gingri lathe crank thing. Take a look at this. I'll show you some really close up images. I'm not even gonna polish this up or anything. Just I just cut off the, the nubs and then, you know, filed in some faces. Uh, and here's the crazy part, you know, despite my efforts to sabotage the burnout process and the casting, uh, the entire thing filled completely. Even some of the little supports that I failed to cut off. And the way this is modeled, every place that one of these little wires comes together, there's a thick spot. That's not ideal, and a lot of those had to drain through a whole bunch of these little wires to get to get burned out completely. And it did! It filled completely with metal, the burnout clearly works very well, and it only took four hours. It didn't crack the investment plaster either, which I was kind of worried about, especially that die, because it's a big, thick chunk. No problems. I did have one major issue with this thing, though, that I didn't record. All of this went very well, right? And at the end, I had this very cool casting, and it was full of plaster. That was an ordeal trying to get it all out of there because some of these holes are too small for a needle to get in there and they still cast nicely. That took a long time. I'm open to suggestions. It, ultrasonic cleaner? Would that help? Let me know in the comments, please. And as cool as this thing looks, I doubt it was very strong. It's very, very, very light. Okay, I would be remiss if I didn't end this uh, talk about the two and only two downsides I found with the many months that I've had this resin. Yes, I've had it for months. I'm really slow to get these videos out. My apologies. First up, this stuff is kind of expensive. All the casting resins are pretty expensive. This is more expensive than the Soraya Tech stuff. I'll put a link to uh, their Amazon store and their website down below, you can see. When I put the current price of the resin into the slicer, it told me that the three things, the four things that I printed for today came to $3.34. So that's not a lot, especially considering the plaster was probably that much and the energy I used to burn it out was probably more than that. And the metal was, this metal's cheap. It was probably a dollar or two worth of metal. So in the end, total cost of this project, the resin being more expensive isn't a lot more, though it is a lot more expensive than a lot of other resins. If I had cast this in Soriatech, uh Cast Purple, it would have been a dollar 25. And in Sunlu ABS-like, it would have been 33 cents. I think this stuff's definitely worth the price though. Second downside I see is something that will probably never come up for anybody but me. I had printed a bunch of this stuff uh, a long time ago, and then I didn't fully cure it. I just washed it, used it for pictures and stuff, and then I let it just sit around for three, four weeks, maybe a month in this super hot garage. We had a very hot summer. I then took it and put it into the curing machine, cured it, and some of it cracked. I talked to Monocure about this. They said, yeah, it doesn't like hanging around for a long time in a hot garage. We're talking the, the prints themselves, not the uncured resin. It's also been very humid out here. I don't know if that matters. So the solution here is obvious. Print the stuff that you're going to use when you're gonna use it and then use it. So you won't run into this problem. We're talking like I had some thick stuff, like one of these rings was sitting around, this one was sitting around for a month before I finally put it in the finished curing station. So don't do that. Otherwise, I think it's pretty awesome. I'll put links to all this stuff down below. Um, Monocure tells me that if you buy it on Amazon, leave a review, they're going to pick five people and send them a free bottle. Try that. I don't know if they'll send you the, the chocolate bar, but I'm pretty sure you can get the chocolate bar on Amazon anyway. It's called a Tim Tam, Arnott's Tim Tam, product of Australia. It's pretty good. They should sell these here.